This is the part one video for the Teach with ArcGIS for Skills training course. And it will show you how to create an interactive map using live data in ArcGIS Online. The following practical could also align to the Junior Cycle Geography Learning Outcomes 2.8, Investigate how people respond to a natural disaster, or 3.2, Investigate the consequences of migration. We will try to find live earthquake data in the next practical. And we'll search for this in our online sources and in ArcGIS Online. The first thing we'll do is log in to ArcGIS Online. And we click Map. Once the map opens, we can open a new tab in our browser. It will bring us to Google. Um, we can search for download earthquake data from the USGS website in spreadsheet format. We we'll click on the first link that comes up. And once the website opens, we can scroll down and we're going to search for all earthquakes from the past seven days from across the world. We'll see that it will download in our downloads here and we're going to go back up to our map here. So once we have our map open, we simply drag and drop the CSV file of the earthquakes onto the map. And you'll see them automatically appear on the map. And it will also use smart mapping to decide how to display the data for the earthquakes on the map there. So for first, it will go choose an attribute to show. So we use the drop down and we're going to search and display the earthquakes by order of magnitude. This will break down the earthquakes by the magnitude value in the table for each of the different earthquakes across the world, measuring from a magnitude of 6.7 to minus 1.3. Once you see this on the map, we might just zoom in and we'll click done. We can also just X away this download here. And you might be wondering where the data comes while we ordered it by magnitude. When you click on an earthquake, you'll see the information associated with that earthquake on the map when it happens. This one, the 23rd of January, 2020, um, and its location just off Texas. And you can also just click under the map layer here and click on this icon for table. And you'll see that 2,392 earthquakes happened in the past seven days across the world. And it'll all be listed in table form here. But because it's got a latitude and longitude value, it's able to display its location on the map. The next thing we'll do is try to figure out why these earthquakes have happened where they have in the past seven days. So we can go up to add, we can search for layers, We can search in ArcGIS Online and we can type in plate boundaries. The first layer that pops up is tectonic plate boundaries. We can see where this layer comes from um, and you can see that it breaks down the plate boundaries by converging, ridge, diffuse and transform plate boundaries. So we'd like to add this layer to the map. You'll see it display. You can click X and the back arrow to go back. Now you'll see all the different plate boundaries and you can see how the earthquakes have appeared across the different plate boundaries. You can see from the legend that all the plate boundaries are currently the same. So if we go back, we can use our tool here for change style and we can choose an attribute to show like we did for magnitude, but this time we're going to choose by type of plate boundary. And we're going to click done. This time we will be able to see which earthquakes are happening along which plate boundaries. Next we might like to choose a base map to see if the underlying base map can give us any more information about why the earthquakes are happening where they are. So we can click National Geographic in this example which is a nice base map for contrast in the different areas across the world. And we can try and find a location. So we might click Mexico to see if any earthquakes have happened there in the past seven days. We can see that there's a bunch of earthquakes that have happened here. And we can just scroll in and we can see that this one was 4.8 magnitude on the 21st of January. And this one 
was 4.7 on the 26th. We can also see that these particular earthquakes are happening along a transform and converging plate boundaries. Next we'll try and find some data on tsunamis because we know that there is links between earthquakes and tsunamis. So we're just going to search in our search box again. And the first layer we see is Tsunami Energy Maps for Historical Events. We'll see this layer is an authoritative source and it's from NOAA Geo Platform. And um, so we know that this will add to our research on earthquakes. So we'll see that Tsunami Energy Maps for selected historic tsunami events are computed in real time forecasting of tsunamis um, using the FORC or IFT forecast model. So we can scroll through and see the energy that was collected by the tsunami when it happened and predicting speed, wavelength, amplitude and so on. So you can scroll down and get more information about this, but we can see that it gives a deep ocean tsunami ampli amplitude um, from blue to red. And we'll see at the historical earthquakes that have happened we can search and see the energy of the tsunami that happened after the earthquake. So we're going to click add to map and we're going to search for Japan in this next example. So we're going to click X and X and back and we're going to search for Japan. We can then see in this example the amount of energy produced by the tsunami after the earthquake that happened on the 11th of March 2011. You could discuss this with your class, this particular earthquake, and see what Japan did after after the earthquake. Was there migration? Um, what happened next? The damage that was caused by the earthquake and the tsunami? And go into the natural disaster and more information about it. But you can see that this is a very interactive way of learning about earthquakes, especially very quickly getting access to earthquake data from around the world within the past seven days. Next, we'll save our map by clicking Save and Save As, giving it a title, so Earthquake Map and a tag, Earthquake, and clicking Save Map. We'll use this map again in part two of today's training session. So next we want to click new map because we're going to look at another topic and see what other data is available on ArcGIS Online. In this example, we're going to click add and we're going to look at the wildfires in California that have happened recently. So we're going to click add search for layers. We're going to type in wildfire risk in ArcGIS Online. And we'll see a number of layers appear. The first one being the USA wildfire activity map. You can scroll down and see this is an authoritative source as from the Living Atlas as well. Um, and we can scroll down to see what kind of information it includes. So we can see that it's featuring wildfire activity downloaded from the GeoMac outgoing data sets from the USGS. And um, we can scroll down and see it's near real time information based on agency reports and fire perimeter data. And we can see that this is worth using. So we're going to scroll down and click add to map. Next, we'll scroll down and see what kind of other information is available to us. So we might want to see where the fires are, but also the wildfire hazard potential. You can see from this one that it is the wildfire hazard potential layer from the federal user community. Um, last update on December 5th, 2019. And you can scroll down and see that the US Fire Service, US FS Fire Modeling Institute um, creates this layer to help inform assessments of wildfire risk or prioritization of fuels management needed. And you can scroll down and see that it gives a classification from very low risk to very high risk. So we're going to add this to the map. We're going to click X and the back arrow to go back and go to our content. Um, we can see that we can't see our fires at the moment, so we might want to reorder these by clicking the three dots and move this layer up. You can then click the arrows beside each of these to see what sort of data is included in these layers. So we've got active fire reports, active furniture, wildfire hazard potential. 
can also zoom in on a wildfire hazard potential and we can go transparency to see the areas underneath on the map. So where we're looking at on the map for the fires. And we can zone in on a couple of areas. So we can pick this one off California. And we can click on the fire. So we can see this happen on the 24th of January 2020 at 2.41 p.m. Um, near the Curran River. And we can see that 0% contained at the moment. But we can also see from this information that this particular area lies along, if we click legend, a very high wildfire hazard potentially area. So because we know this, you could discuss with your class um, if it's high wildfire potential, what the local area does to respond to this once a wildfire happens um, with resources to put out the fire and manage the area once the fire has occurred. So the impact of this um, hazard and how California responds to these events. Next, we will click save and save as to save our map. And we'll click save map. Once our map is saved, you can go back to your maps at any stage by clicking home and clicking content. And you'll see the maps that we created today. So you can go into any of them to view them or edit them or share them afterwards. So we might just go into our earthquake map here again, just to show you how to share your map. So you see it's item details page and what layers are in this particular map. You can click share there, or you can actually just go and open up your map viewer to open it up again. So once your map opens, you can view it, edit it, but you can also click share. You can decide who you want to share it with. So everybody or a particular class group. Um, and you can also just copy the link of the map and send it to someone or your students in your class and click done.